20 years ago Saturday, terrorists hijacked four planes bound for California. Two of them crashed into the Twin Towers in New York, another one into the Pentagon. But the fourth, United 93, never hit its intended target. On that flight, a Bay Area executive and athlete who has left a legacy both on and off the field. Twice a week in San Francisco, a rugby team known as the San Francisco Fog hits the pitch to practice. Founded in 2000, the Fog was the first gay, inclusive rugby club on the West Coast. And it's been, a, I would say, a shining light for people around the world. Among its earliest members, the life of the party. Give blood, play rugby. <laughs> a big guy, a very aggressive player named... Mark Bingham. He loved the sport and he loved life. At Los Gatos High, Mark was captain of the rugby team. At Cal, he was a two-time championship star flanker. The sport suited his personality. Mark was a vicious competitor, but off the field, friends say, a teddy bear. The thing about rugby is you'll kick the snot out of each other on the pitch, and then you'll go have a beer together afterwards. Todd Sarner was uh, one of yeah. Mark's best friends. They grew up together and played on the same high school rugby team. Mark was Todd's best man. It would be hard to, to summarize what Mark was like. Mark was bigger than life. He had a lot of energy. He always had a lot of energy. When Mark graduated from Cal, he came out as gay to his family and friends. He founded his own tech public relations firm, and he joined The Fog. He was just a really good guy. 20 years ago, in late August, Todd dropped Mark off at SFO to catch a flight to New York. A week or so later, Mark called. He said he was coming home. On September 11th, Mark was late, the last person to board Flight 93 in Newark. The Bay Area and world soon saw the horrific attacks unfold on live TV. Terrorists in the cockpit, hijacked planes full of fuel turned into weapons of mass destruction. Right oh, there's another one, another plane just hit. First, the Twin Towers in New York, then the Pentagon. Everybody was kind of freaking out. Uh, wasn't Mark flying back from New York today? Fear spread from coast to coast. Because it could have happened here in San Francisco, no one knew what was happening, no iPhones, right? United 93, Cleveland, if you hear the sound right then. On flight 93, the passengers and the crew formed a plan to wrest control of the plane from the hijackers. It was a team effort. Mark was front and center. Everyone who knew Mark came to the same conclusion before there was any stories out about what the passengers did, and that was beyond any shadow of a doubt, Mark did something. They rushed the cockpit door. United 93, have you got information on that yet? Yeah, he's down. He's down? Yes. When did he land? He did not land. The plane never reached its intended target, the U.S. Capitol building. Flight 93 crashed in a field near Shanksville, Pennsylvania. All 44 people on board died, including the four hijackers. I think that really is a lesson of Flight 93. In that moment, with no idea what was going to happen, they came together, they worked together as a team, and they tried to do something, and they came damn close. Mark left an enduring legacy. It was okay to talk about being gay and being a rugby player and being a hero all at once. 20 years ago on 9-11, the fog gathered at the Pilsner Inn near the Castro. Here you'll find the team after practice. Above the jukebox, a plaque in Mark's honor. It's important to just celebrate, celebrate the people that we have in our lives and uh, celebrate what Mark did. On September 11th, the club plays a tournament in his honor and an award-winning documentary called The Man. Rugby Player will stream live for the first time. This game is really more about the spirit of Mark Bingham and what he stood for in that moment. It reminds you of the goodness of human beings, and I, I like to think that's part of Mark's legacy, too. Another hero, Mark's mother, Alice Hoagland. After his death, she became a mother figure of sorts to the gay rugby movement. Alice died last December. We have posted more details on the tournament and the documentary on KPIX.com.